Okay, so time is cyclical in Battlestar Galactica. The same events occur again and again, and the central principle of this cycle is that humans develop and then produce artificial intelligence, and that artificial intelligence rebels against them, and then they're forced to leave and set up somewhere else, and eventually make more artificial intelligence, which then rebels, etc., etc. Now, the earliest cycle we know about is COBOL, and on the planet COBOL existed the human species of the Lords of COBOL. We have no idea if they originated on that planet, or if they are as much a victim of this cycle as everyone else, and at some point came there from somewhere else. But either way, they had a polytheistic religion that's got the whole kind of Artemis and Ares and Zeus mythology going on, and they separate themselves into 12 tribes of humans that are all named after the various zodiac signs. They develop on COBOL for a while until eventually they create their own artificial intelligence in the form of humanoid Cylons that make up the 13th tribe. These Cylons have resurrection technology where they can be downloaded into auxiliary bodies when they die. Eventually there is a war, and the 13th tribe fights the other 12, and then everybody has to leave COBOL. The 13th tribe goes one way and eventually finds a planet called Earth, the 12 tribes go in the other direction, they find the Cyrenus system, and they set up the 12 colonies. Now, both Earth and the 12 colonies have the polytheistic religion based on the Lords of Kobol that they inherited from coming from Kobol. Except on the 12 colonies, there's a very minority religion that is monotheistic and worships a single god called God, but they don't have a lot of supporters, and they're quite small time. Now, eventually, the 13th tribe settles on Earth, and they ultimately abandon and forget about the resurrection technology and begin reproducing normally, and they exist for generations and generations until they become very advanced, and then they create Cylon Centurions, robotic servants for themselves. Now these Centurions eventually inevitably rebel, there is a nuclear war, everyone on Earth dies, apart from five scientists who were working to resurrect the resurrection technology, they were working to bring back the old resurrection technology, and in order to escape from the nuclear war on Earth, they use that technology in a prototype stage and resurrect themselves in orbit on a research ship. Now it's at this point that the final five, these five Cylons from the 13th tribe, who have been having all kinds of prophetic visions and reading ancient scrolls and such, basically figure out the cycle of time. And they realize that they need to get to the 12 colonies because they are inevitably going to create centurions of their own and there will inevitably be a war, and the only way to break the cycle is to get there and warn them first. Unfortunately, the research ship they escaped on is a sublight vessel, so it takes them hundreds and hundreds of years to get to the 12 colonies. And when they get there, they're too late. It's the 10th year of the first Cylon War, the Cylon Centurions have rebelled and have been fighting the humans for 10 years. Also, the Centurions made by the 12 colonies have the monotheistic religion, because the Church of Monotheism proselytized to them when they were a developing sentient race because they saw it as an opportunity to kind of corner this new developing society and gain loads of followers. This does not work out well for them. The 12 colonies, Silent Centurions, fight this war for ages, and then the final five show up, and when the final five do show up, they find the Centurions to be already attempting to create their own humanoid Cylons. So we're getting cycles within cycles. There's going to be AI rebellions within AI rebellions. So the final five turn up and they put a stop to this. They agree to give the Centurions resurrection technology in return for them signing an armistice with the humans. This happens. The final five then adopt the monotheist religion of the Centurions, and this becomes the standard practice of the whole Cylon Empire. They then create eight models of additional humanoid Cylons. The first of these is called Cavill, number one, and he never quite works out quite as well as the rest of them. The, all, the rest of them are all totally loyal. The first one is a little bit dodgy, a little bit weird. He is resentful of his creators, his five creators, for deliberately creating him to be in the image of a human. And, and he has to experience the universe in a limited way, using eyes and ears and all that kind of stuff. And he has a wonderful speech about this in season four that you should go and watch if you haven't seen it already. But the final five created him like this because they believed that that was what God wanted. They thought it was a tenant of the monotheist religion that they should be created in the image of humans. Cavill, being resentful of this, grows increasingly rebellious. Eventually, uh, there's another Cylon called Number 7 that the Final Five are very fond of, and there's a lot of favoritism going on, and Number 1 becomes resentful of Number 7 and eventually murders him, and poisons the amniotic fluid that creates that line of Cylons, so there can never be any more Number 7s, and eventually, uh, so resentful does he become that he uh, hatches a plan where he captures the Final Five, uh, he creates uh, singular resurrection bodies for each of them, and then he wipes their memories, he wipes the memories of all other Cylons in the Empire of the Final Five, so only the number ones know the Final Five ever existed, and then he plants the Final Five in the Twelve Colonies to live as humans for 40 years, as like a, a penance, they must know what it's like to live the way he is forced to live. Then his plan is, in 40 years time, he's gonna nuke the Twelve Colonies, exterminate everybody, 
the final five will die in the process, and then they they will all resurrect on his resurrection ship with the five bodies that he's got backed up. They'll get all their memories back in the process of resurrecting, and then he hopes they'll have learned their lesson. Now, the only problem here is uh, all of the final five survive the nuclear apocalypse in the 12 colonies by some combination of luck and possibly divine intervention. Uh, Saul Ty and Galen Tyrrell are on the Galactica. Uh, Samuel Anders is in a high-altitude training thingamajig uh, doing Pyramid. Uh, Tori Foster is in traffic and just doesn't die. And Ellen Ty is on PyCon, and she's actually talking to a cavil, a number one, who decides at the last minute that she hasn't learned her lesson and helps her escape the nuclear blast onto Galactica. Uh, the humans and Galactica and the fleet then run away from the 12 colonies, which are destroyed. Uh, lots of shenanigans happen. Four seasons of excellent TV. They find Cobol. Uh, they find the Algae Planet, which has the marker that leads to the 13th tribe to Earth. Eventually, they discover the identity of the Final Five. Oh, Ellen Ty dies uh, along the way before they know that she was ever a, a one of the Final Five. And then the rest of the Final Five are revealed, but they still don't have their memories. And then they find Earth, the 13th tribe. And they are all surprised to discover that it is a nuclear wasteland because the Final Five didn't have the memory of that anymore. So it's a surprise to them when they get there. All hope is lost. Earth is destroyed. It's bad times. And then Ellen Ty turns up because when she died earlier on, she resurrected in Cavill's hands and has been in his custody for the last few years. And eventually she leaves and meets up with the rest of the Final Five. And at this point, uh, various strange spiritual shenanigans... Uh, lead the final five to translate this music that they've all been hearing, which is actually FTL jump coordinates, uh, which they're going to use to find a new home. But before that happens, they destroy the resurrection hub, which means the Cylon Empire loses resurrection technology, and then Cavill and the Cylon Empire try to negotiate to get resurrection back, and the final five are going to give it to them in return for a ceasefire, but it all goes wrong because Tyrrell kills Tori after he discovers that Tori uh, killed his wife, Callie. And because they don't have all of them, they can't recreate resurrection. So Cavill just kills himself, and then the colony gets nuked. The colony, by the way, is the little tiny research ship the Final Five left Earth on. It's since become a big sprawling mega thing. But it gets destroyed, all the Cylons die, apart from the few that helped the Colonials. And then they jump to the coordinates that they got from the spiritual music, and they find a habitable planet, which they decide to name Earth in honor of the first Earth that got nuked. This Earth, the second Earth, is our Earth, and they arrive in prehistoric times in Tanzania. Now, at this point, because everyone's aware of the cycle, they try to break the cycle by abandoning all of their technology in the hope that they can extend the time until their society on this new Earth creates new AI. Uh, one thing they do, however, is they let go of the centurions who helped them, because certain centurions fought for the colonials in the last few battles of the voyage, and as a reward for their assistance, they let that base star leave with all the centurions on it, and it's left kind of open-ended as to whether this is a good idea or not, because this might be the thing that makes this still part of the cycle, because they may one day come back and seek vengeance or develop sentience or whatever. And the show ends with us in the modern day and indications of developing AI in today's world, and maybe we've only delayed the inevitable, maybe the cycle will continue. So that's it, Battlestar Galactica, completely spoiled for you. If you've not seen it before, I think you should still watch it, even though I just told you everything that happens, because it's basically some of the best TV drama ever made. It's probably the best science fiction TV show of all time, I think. It really is excellent, and you should check it out. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you all for listening. This is Daniel from Space Doc, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Doc. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.